So this session we are going to call, we are going to discuss about what is the design principle. So as a part of this uh, topic, what I'm going to design, discuss about some of the, you know, language agnostic, but the basic design principle that every developer should be knowing. Okay. So here we're going to be talking about five design principles. Uh, so first of all, what we understand, uh, we have previously had the session on the design patterns, right? The pattern which you can follow to write the individual piece of code, right? Now, the next thing comes up is that uh, when you design that particular pattern to write the piece of code, but how the particular piece of code can be combined together uh, when you are developing a component, what is actually means by the good design that is there. Okay. So what do you mean by good design? It's not a good design, it's somebody that is, uh, who defines his own self design and say that is the basically good design. Uh, we have to think about more objective wise, what is a good design? A good design is that which will take less amount of cost to changing the design as a minimum. So if I need to modification of any APIs or any particular code or a microservice or any piece of code, then maybe that is there. The design, the cost of changing should be minimum. So when you say cost, the cost is both in terms of the dollar amount or the costing as well as the amount of time it was making the choice changes. Now, always we need to do remember that is uh, what is basically always the software going to be changed over a period of time. And it should be always like a evolutionary process. Okay. So you need to say that uh, when it comes to change the design or you will have like a big design on top and then when you actually roll out to the production, you will face the different issues. So instead of doing that, what you can say, uh, you may be finding there will be flaws that it can be discovered later on. That is uh, very basic. So what you need to do when you're designing, you need to realize what is the problem that is you are trying to solve, right? And it is not that at the end you say that, okay, we have a problem is there. Rather than we can be reactive, we can become proactive and try to evolve, define a good design. So uh, one thing is easier to change, uh, that is define a good design. Right, and then we can see that uh, how we can see that particular design is change up over a period of time, how it is involved, and towards something much more easier to maintain, easier to code, etc. Okay. Now, when you design this, uh, almost it is not possible to get it right on the first time because nobody has been able to write the code on the first time correctly. There's always, it's like a evolutionary process. Every time you get more information and uh, it's not just you tried it once and it is successful. It takes a lots of amount of time thinking to do a particular problem and then come up with a solution. And it's more like a like an iteration process. You go over one version, you improve upon that, you go over the next version, and you go over that. And we have the different patterns we can apply that we have learned before. So it is not that, that it will be you know, created in a single setting or single iteration. It can be done. Because the first time we create a particular prototype to evidence that something is working, then it will be evolved and then you can you know do it uh, in a piece by piece improvement into that so similar thing we need to be as a developer need to understand that is over a period of time your software quality will get improved it is not the first time you're going to be writing clean amount of okay so based on that um 
software is actually you need to be always need to be changed as the requirement always in okay so what you mean by the cost of changing is the cost of rewriting that particular piece of software okay and obviously if this like active code or a project the always is going to be changes over period of time it's constantly evolving it is not that the one feature one thing that is done in a one sprint is in the right so it will always get changed right sir now when we are thinking about you know writing the particular piece of code we can implement this kind of a design piece so we have understood what is a good design we have to objectively look it and also it is a over a period of time we can evolve the quality of this now how we can you know uh, create a good design for creating a good design the first step we need to think of is that that it is not easy to create something that is good right to design at the first time first step as you have understood is not going to work we have to let go of our egos when we are designing something it is not that somebody says my design is good this is coming from a ego but it is not that we have to be you know just without ego right so we need to be also thinking about how can we improve on our code right so when you work with the developer there is two uh, simple thing we need to keep in mind that it is like a evolutionary portrait and also you need to take a pride in what you create but you have to also defend that part of it right uh, why it is good you have to be able to explain it okay so that answer our questions about how we can you know create a better design so we have to objectively think even if that particular design i'm creating okay there's no need to be emotional about it okay just after you can see Out your code, whatever your design, how you are, you know, linking to the classes, either you are using a particular polymorphism or not, that we need to do. Okay, so that's the key thing. Another point is don't become emotional about or attached to your solution. It is end of the day, your solution is to be used by somebody else, and they will also be changed over a period. Of time. Rather, we need to focus on how we can, you know, solve our problem. that's been said now let's uh, it is over the period of time we got to do that and it will require the multiple team members to do it so how we can you know improve our design so one way of improving our design is spending time on reviewing each other code right it is always better to learn from the others and always you can you know give your suggestions so you can always review the design of somebody else to know what are the you know patterns they are following and also you can see how they are writing the code that way you can learn and your code when you write it somebody can also look into it. they also can be able to learn the same so always take the opportunity to learn it now don't become a developers there are two kinds of uh, developers who are going to be you know struggle by right? who just only able to follow the instruction and they only follow the instructions which is given to them they don't you know spend time to think about what is the problem what is the other solution or alternative maybe or maybe another type of developers are who are not able to find the solution or able to follow the problem or they not able to follow the instructions so don't become either one of them okay so what is the base developer will be somebody who can you know take up the instructions and also can be thinking on his own how he can you know improve on the particular problem and or maybe you know explore a little bit and then he can be able to solve okay now 
when you talk about the first design principle, uh, is or keep it simple and stupid. So first principle is say uh, keep your code simple. Don't make it complex. So when you say what is simplicity or what which code is not complex, right? Simple means something that make you focus on your code. So say for you have implemented a certain business logic and you have like multiple seven or eight if else statements. So is your code is simple to understand? Maybe it's simple for you to implementation because you can, you know, if else statement you can easily implement it. But is that if any condition getting changed, what going to happen? You have to again look through the all the if else statements. And for every kind of scenario and sub scenario, you have to write the test cases. So what is looks simple doesn't is simple. Okay. So when you say simple, it need to be that keep your focus on that. Okay. That means you don't have to do too much context switching. You don't have to look into multiple methods here and there. And the code is concise, small. And the, from the code, you can be able to understand. How can you create other simple problem? Right? Other simple problem is only about that you are only focused on the real problem that you are solving it. Okay? You are not depending on or thinking about something else. Okay. Third principle for point that is we need to take care of is that simple things fail less, right? So if your project or your component is doing seven different things, or if it is actually integrated with seven different uh, components, right? Dependency wise. So that means there are more chances for your component to fail because if other component source code will change your source code may not be compatible or if there is like a logic problem that is there, your code also get filled. Okay. And simple to keep you focus and simple for others to understand your code. Okay. And simple is also not familiar, right? So for example, you may not be familiar about the strings, but that code is much more simple or using optional is much simple to understand by you or keep you focused than you know writing a bunch of while loop and within that it if right. So if you compare the both set of code, both set of code will be doing the same thing, but other set of code is doing it simple, it has like a fail check. And here the fail checks are lacking. There is no null pointer, etc. But here you may miss the particular null pointer check if you are not consciously doing this everything. Okay. So those are the basic points about what is mean by simplicity. Okay. Yes, sir. Any question? On the no, sir. Okay. Now, what is complexity? Complexity, yeah. So basically, if you are having like a particular problem domain, right? The complexity is originating from that particular problem. Right. So you have to deal with that particular problem. We cannot do much about it. Okay. And then the next set of, for example, say if I'm building a particular problem uh, solution for payment processing, right? So what is happening in payment processing? Always you make the payment, but they, uh, hardly the payments become the real time. Because always there is some time for the bank to process your uh, payments, right? And they either you paying by credit card, debit card, ACH payment, etc. 
there is always a complexity for the payment domain that is coming that having like you have to do a, a daily settlements right and that is kind of like an example of a domain complexity you cannot escape from that that is how the nature of you know payment processing works right correct uh, now, right, sir. right so that is whichever system you work on you're going to be seeing the same kind of you know uh, problem that you need to be solving about so that's your inherent or domain specific complexity now accidental complexity may be how you are implementing that particular solution to solve that particular problem that is coming arising from that now for example say i have to do a batch processing now i can do a simple batch processing by creating a single uh, utility code and that particular utility code has in no error logging or may not having retry capability or restart capability right now you have gone through that particular code with production so what happen is now obviously if there is uh, any issues comes up it is difficult to or complex to for you to debug right so now in that case there is no mechanism to see what is the issue is or there may not be any mechanism to solve that particular problem so that is your accidental complexity or how we are solving that same problem now if you have chosen a different solution maybe a particular library or a framework which provide these things out of the box you don't have to deal with that complexity then that your accidental complexity has been removed okay so again going back to that particular problem where we need to you know process large amount of data maybe on uh, on our google cloud platform i can do the particular batch processing or you know cloud agnostic way i have there i can use simple apache libraries or framework that is enabled for that for example you have like a flink or you have other software so that will take care of that particular complexity of real time or that processing right? large amount of data are doing it here right so that will take care even if i wanted to choose to write this on my own so then i have to deal with the my choices of handling all of these things retriability logging error dashboard monitoring scheduling all of these things i have to handle so that is coming out of the solution in chosen for your problem now then how when you proposing a solution or proposing a design then you have to ask yourself okay is my solution is simple or it is complex right whether it going to take less amount of time to you know make those changes after the design it is handling all the non performance requirement non function requirement for me or not okay and then what kind of complexities i am going to be deal with are going to be deal are coming out of the solution that i am proposing or if they are the inherent problem of the problem right so what is a good design so good design which hides our inherent complexity that is complexity out of the problem and eliminate the accessibility accidental complexity that means use a particular solution where many things are coming out of the you don't have to deal with accidental complexity and also they can address some of the inherent complexity okay yes sir any question right now no sir okay no, sir and mostly we have to deal with the accidental complexity okay, okay. now the next principle is known as yakni that means you are not going to need it right now okay that is the yakni principle
Okay. So what is mean by that? Um, so it's about that. Would we implement our changes right away? For example, say I have to, you know, deal with seven different kind of a processing logic, right? Should I have to, you know, make the seven different type of processing logic based on a certain input? Now, what I can do as a developer, I can go ahead and I can, you know, implement all the logic that is there. For example, say I have to handle, uh, suddenly say, associate some of the additional attributes to a hierarchical structure. Like, for example, they may be metadata, they may be attribute, they may be taxonomy, etc. So I have like a three different kind of association. I have to make one object with a three different kind of other object that I have to manage, create, update, delete, this kind of card operation I have to maintain. Now, whether you're going to go ahead and implement all of them in a one go, or should I think about, okay, who are my clients? Or who are my, you know, they're going to be using my application. Are they need all of these things at this present moment? Okay. So is your pro problem is asking you to solve everything right now? And what is the cost of implementation now? And what is the cost of implementation is later? Okay. So the cost of implementation of right now is the dollar in. And cost of implementing it later on is the dollar L. So then we can choose our uh, decision based on if dollar N, that means now or later, is more than the later, then we will postpone it. If it is dollar N and dollar L, if I implement right now or implement sometime later, it's the same, then also, I can postpone, right? But if I do it, postpone is later, right? And then what is the probability of this situation? If the probability of this situation is high, for example, there are frequently some of the metadata attributes are getting updated. Now here, are those updates that need to be synced real time? So what I can do, I can choose two kind of solutions, right? After the update, I can refresh my systems, okay, to pull in the later data, a later period of time, right? Or I can look into and discuss with the business to understand how much the probable this situation may be when that particular changes are required. So if the changes are required real time to be reflected in the system, or they can be okay to have this coming into the systems after a certain period of time. Then I can, you know, choose one design over the later, or I can implement this right now, or I can choose to implement it later. When my cost of implementation will be later, will be same as either current or it is more than the later one. Okay. So then it's better not to implement that. Okay. And then you can choose to implement that is later, postpone it. Okay. But we dearly don't do the postpone our code, right? What we do is when you get the requirement, we when in one go, I have implemented all of it. But later on, we find out that this is not what is required right away. And instead of that, if you implement the real time update, it looks all great but it is not that frequently required. So you have like an additional cost that you incur for implementing a real-time system update on a certain upstream system to your downstream system, right? And obviously the cost going to be high right now, uh, sorry, cost going to be up high later on, provided you don't have enough automated test right so if you don't have lots of automated tests so you may not know that whether your changes later going to break anything then 
so it is better then to be implemented right away than waiting for it nearing your production release and then implement that okay in that case when to you know postpone a certain thing or choose a design that we can implement later it's totally depend on the business requirement how often you require that and what is the cost of that particular implementation or making that particular change okay so you at least what you ain't going to need it that means right now there is no need for that particular implementation or the design to think of and the decisions you need to make based on the cost of implementation and you have a like a good automated testing high coverage so when you make the changes it will not going to take much time to tell you that things are going to be worked in production or not as we have to go through a quick feedback loop and we get to know whether our code is changing as we are promoting between the environments okay any question on we are any principle no sir now yearly principle is not about laziness or anything that you want to be always postpone because there is always you postpone is later the cost is high the business cost of implementation is high and the, you can overrun the schedule okay. now the third thing are that these two uh, you know points right i hope you guys know how hard about cohesion or coupling before Yes, sir. Okay. So, can you guys take tell me what is cohesion, what is coupling, which is good, which is bad? So, cohesion means uh, which is good, which is bad. That I cannot tell. But uh, like cohesion is like uh, uh, we can tell that two forces like we have like two codes. Okay, then we can tell that. this one is more suitable than that one not quite hmm coupling actually i cannot explain sir cohesion okay. cohesion is basically okay let's take up the coupling right so coupling as the name suggest whether the two components are dependent on each other okay what you are dependent on okay depend so normally what happen is your, your code or your piece of code cannot work uh, in in isolation for example if you need to access the database sir, your coupling, data access hmm. sir, coupling means like that tight coupling and loose coupling that type of right right, right okay okay so so obviously you have to depending on that particular database driver or the library that is there right you cannot escape that right otherwise what you have to do you have to write all of the code yourself you have to manage the db connection everything right so then how to eliminate that we cannot eliminate that so instead of that we come under to make it loose so when we make it loose we obviously bring in an orm layer right but you guys have to look into that when you implement this particular orm layer you don't want it to your database access layer to need to be aware of your orm layer that you are using so your orm code is not or hibernate or eclipse links or whatever orm you have selected or jop are not going to be intervene into your database access layer or your data repository layer okay so they are not going to be aware of each other right and you can easily modify or replace one implementation with another implementation by switching that particular configuration right and choosing the right dependent library into your spring boot application right or any application for that matter so instead of if we cannot resolve or eliminate the coupling we wanted to make them loose right so we wanted to make them one 
component is not it is depending on another component but they should not be you know aware about them that's why we mostly use uh, interfaces polymorphism for that particular cases we write multiple implementation and then based on the configuration the correct implementation get injected and then you can use that particular dependency as you're supposed to use them similarly if you see the spring data repository it eliminates the dependency on the sql right is only have a dependency or is there is no dependency on gql either because it's creating the sql based on reading your functional names of your interface methods right so that's how it's able to eliminate the kite coupling and switch them to a loose coupling okay does that uh, clarify what is a coupling is yes sir okay now what is what, is, yeah. what is actually cohesion means here means what how it is different from coupling Mm -hmm. in uh, coupling like we have a uh, different components okay mm -hmm. so we we are able to like separate them from each other while we are doing loose coupling be it you're telling like from the spring data jp we are able to separate the sql mm -hmm. and for for cohesion how it means how it's working in yeah, cohesion is about that how cohesive is your design, right? Is your design, say, for example, you need to, you know, develop, right, uh, both processing the CSV, okay, and also loading that particular CSV data, doing the validation in into the database. Now, if this work has been given, now, if you put everything into a single component, so what is the component is doing? is pass it has a parsing csv logic it has a csv validation logic right it has a conversion of csv records into java records java objects right csv row into java object and also it has a responsibility of saving those things into the deep database as well right so what is cohesion means is about uh, is about concentrating on a particular single work right single unit of work and instead of focusing on many different things so if you are doing say all of that then obviously if there is a csv file structure change so you have to change your component correct because your component also has a passing logic correct and then if there is a validation rule get changed as a part of this uh, additional column be added into then again you have to touch your component right yes sir. because it also has the validation logic that is there okay you have to also modify your model parts model transformation that logic and also you have to modify it to store the additional responsibility you know saving that particular detail right so that's like a high cohesive design right so instead of doing that, we can you know think of how we can you know separate now, right? So if you say one particular component is only responsible of passing logic, so let them do that particular logic instead of you know populating something else. So if only the new fields are added, that's okay. I'm going to change it, but maybe our validation logic remains the same. I don't have to modify that. Or maybe I write my validation logic is more generic, and then it can you know look into, and then based on the configuration, I can only modify, and then automatically it take up that particular design and do the particular validation. So this principle is also driving another principle, that is your single responsibility principle. So what is he saying? Instead of you know concentrating, doing multiple things, or most cohesive, right? You right? 
less cohesive design. So now can you tell me what is what should be high and what should be low? Hello, sir. Hmm? So, uh, high and low in what sense? No, should your coupling be high? No, no, it should be loose. Okay, what about your position? Sorry, hello. What about position? You should be only doing one particular uh, single responsibility principle, right? Yes, yes. Now, DRI principle is a very simple one. Uh, don't repeat yourself, right? So, so what is that? We mostly see we write lots of duplicate code. We don't take care of seeing that if we can, you know, isolate that particular piece of code or isolate that particular piece of component and reuse, make it reusable. Okay. Right. This we can easily can see in the sonar queue that that particular code has been duplicated. Correct. So obviously, if you create more duplicate code, it will increase the higher cost because if one changes need to be there, it basically requires changes to be made in every place. Right. Fine. Right? So what is the area? Basically, states in very simple terms is that every piece of knowledge or every piece of logic we can see, so system should have a unambiguous authoritative representation. That means it should have an only point representation. So, for example, we're going to be using transformation logic from one object to the next object, right? Or maybe the validation rules that are writing. That, that is a basically piece of logic, right? And if I'm using this particular validation logic, it plays repeatedly in multiple other places, but I can simply refactor my code and convert that into an utility method and reuse it only once. So my piece of application going to have a only one implementation logic for this code instead of duplicating myself. So if there is any code changes happen, my cost of rewriting the code or changing the software will be this because I'm not repeating myself. Right? It is a very simple principle, but we don't follow it. We all like now write duplicate code. So it is a very simple principle that will you know keep our cost of rewriting of software is this. Right? Any question either? No, right? No, sir. Now, last from the last part. So, what is seen previously on the cohesive system side? Cohesive system is something that is, uh, you know, doing many things, right? Instead of focusing on a single thing, right? So, what is the single responsibility principle is saying? It's saying that you should be focused on a single responsibility that means your code is doing only one and one thing well is not doing many things right be it your function be it your class multiple function is only doing one thing okay and then that particular piece of logic you can you know implement in other places okay so you just define your responsibility all of the logic that you want to encapsulate into your function or your class. And you only concentrate on that instead of concentrate on many other things that are there. That will create you know, much more easier maintainable code. Any other questions? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. okay. That's about our uh, design principles.
that we should be following. Just we got to repeat that or recap that. What are the good design principles? Is good design need to be objective? We need to be thinking about the complexity, both your inherent complexity and accidental complexity. Try to eliminate your complexity choosing the solution and hide your complexity that is your end of system behind our So for that we are going to use simplicity. Simplicity is something which is may not be familiar to you, but it is familiar to maintain simple to maintain and manage. Yagni is you can postpone things unless that is not required. And if you want to completely postpone things, you have to think about cost of doing it later. If that is high or this is low. Based on that, you can postpone certain things. You want to first implement certain thing and see whether that's what you take it the act on top of cohesion coupling coupling. We may not our core or company may not work in isolation, but we're going to be hiding the actual implementation. And we're going to be keeping our coupling low. Question is also driving their single responsibility principle that do one thing only, focus on one thing, do it well. Don't try to do everything and put in a single things. The other principle is very simple. Don't repeat your code. Try to have like a single logic into your source code. With a single implementation product. Okay, so those are basically the design principles that we have. If we don't have any other question, we can end the session. No, sir. Thank you, Thank you.